Some of you may be teachers or former teachers, you may know the names of Bill Lyon Foz, a very famous Unitarian uh, uh, philosopher of education, uh, was very influenced by uh, Dewey and child-centered uh, education model. And, and Foz was pivotal in bringing that to the Unitarian Universalism. So um, uh, one of the, the key things that I think of when I think of Unitarian Universalist religious education is um, a quote by Channing, who said that the purpose of religion is to not to stamp our beliefs on the minds of children, but to help stir up their own. Uh, and, and I think that that's something that we try to do, that, that uh, by having a sense that the child is not sinful, is not, is, one, one thing that which Unitarian Universalists are unique is we don't do baptisms. Uh, uh, baptism uh, implies that one is sinful and needs to have that washed away, uh, and so we don't perform that, that particular ritual. Uh, we do dedica child dedications, um, understanding that a child is already has that good goodness within them, right? That that inherent goodness. And so, how do we bring it out? How do we um, help nurture and develop that within a child? So, uh, so that's sort of our uh, kind of from a big picture perspective. It's sort of our approach to religious education. And then, um, you know, we do that in various ways, kind of on a practical basis, by uh, having kids uh, learn about some ideas in Unitarian Universalism, but also to learn about the Bible. We don't shy away from stories of the Bible, to learn about different world religions, to go experience world religions. Sometimes we will take our kids, usually when they're a little bit older, um, and go to different churches and experience a worship service there. Um, so it's, it's really about, you know, how do we sort of find that divine spark within a child, and how do we fan the flames and nurture it and bring it out. Um, so that, that's, that's one way we, we try and do that. Uh, uh, as opposed to, I don't know, uh, giving giving highly intellectual lectures or something like that to our kids, which I think you know, probably not unique to Unitarian Universalists. Um, uh, you know, I think a lot of people sort of struggle with that, sort of assuming that kids learn it the same way that adults do, and they don't. They're, Howard Gardner uh, is another very influential person, different ways in which kids learn, and ways in which all people learn, uh, so as to, you know, do things with your body and do things with uh, uh, you know colors and so forth. So, yeah, it's a it's a very exciting field, really, religious education. Is that one right over here? So, what you're saying by universal, you're just non-denominational. No, it's it actually is a denomination. Um, uh, well, well, we don't like the word denomination. That may be part of the confusion. Um, uh, 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 that it's. Uh, um, we, we prefer the word association as opposed to denomination. That may be splitting hairs uh, to some people's eyes, but um, uh, it, it is an actual organization called the Unitarian Universalist Association, and its headquarters is in um, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, uh, yeah, we to the to the Unitarian Universalist uh, 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 spirit, denomination makes it sound like there's um, you know the Pope or something like that, which uh, <laughs> we, we, we're sort of uh, anti-authority in that way, uh, 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 and so. Um, but but no, it is much like, uh, for example, the Baptists, um, the American Baptists, are organized in a similar fashion um, uh, by having uh, different, uh, ha having each church be its final authority. Um, so around, you know, for example, welcoming gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people. Uh, well, that tend, I would say that's generally the case in most Unitarian Universalist churches. There's no one telling you you have to. There's, you know, there's no one making you be open and welcoming. It's something that congregations themselves choose to be. And, and from the Unitarian Universalist point of view, that's better because then it's then we've really owned it, right? We've done the work within our faith community to arrive at the point where we can say we're welcoming to gay, lesbian, bisexual folks, um, as opposed to just being told that. From from above, uh, but but yeah, that that is the that is the yeah. Oh man, well, I wanted to answer her question a bit oh, with you. Sure. I was Southern Baptist raised and became a Unitarian over civil rights because yes. um, the church here in Wilmington was very open to that, and I came from the South. That's improved. But anyway, our two children went to the Unitarian Sunday School, or whatever, <laughs> and I think they grew up really well with the instruction they got. One's an ecologist, and one is bringing the Lakota Indian tribe to the United Nations um, to tell about how we as Americans have hurt the Indian groups. Yeah. Thank you.
Appreciate that testimonial. Let me ask a question. Uh, yes. And the other speakers we've had over the last semester and a half in this course, um, of course, some were born in the religion that they were still in and ministers in at the time they spoke here. We've had others that were not that way, that had moved from uh, one religion of their family to other, another one that they were now a part of. Could you say a few words about, uh, about your journey? Sure. Where you are now. I heard you say you studied. The word religions, and then you are all consider yourself to be a Zen Buddhist. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, well, I won't, you know, go, go into too much detail. I'll hit the high high points here. Um, I was actually raised uh, United Church of Christ. I don't know if everyone's familiar with that. It it uh, historically well, was called the Congregationalists, um, and in and uh, they they actually. Um, are sort of the inheritors of Kelvin um, and the, the uh, opposition to the Unitarians uh, back in those days. But by the time I came along, um, uh, the United Church of Christ was actually a very progressive and, and remains a very progressive liberal Christian um, denomination. Uh, sometimes the joke is that uh, they, they abbreviate themselves UCC, um, and, and the joke among among Unitarians and, and the United Church of Christ is that UCC really stands for Unitarians Considering Christ. Uh, uh, that they're sort of have the same spirit, but actually talk about Jesus and stuff a little bit more than we do. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, we've, the UCC and the Unitarians have done joint curriculum and um, there's some schools that they've merged together with. Uh, but uh, so that was what I was raised in. So I, I, the other joke I have is I didn't have far to fall uh, when I became a Unitarian Universalist. Um, I uh, went to the University of Michigan um, and uh, really found Unitarian Universalism there uh, in Ann Arbor. Um, and uh, so that's sort of home base for, for me and my tradition. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it was just a really great, uh, I, was, I was at a point, as much as the, the lady before was talking about, where I was doing a lot of questioning and exploring and, and decided to make it my major. <laughs> I'm going to be on a spiritual journey, I might as well get college credit for it. Uh, and uh, so I did. And uh, then um, just started going to different things. Went to a mosque for a while, went to um, different, you know, the United Methodists, um, and, and still have a number of really close friends of mine who are uh, United Methodist ministers. Um, a whole bunch of us kind of came out of, of a, a school at Michigan and uh, became clergy together, even though they were, most of them were Methodists, I was, I was a Unitarian Universalist. Um, and that's where I found the Buddhist group and the Unitarian Universalist. And, um, they just sort of stuck, you know. Uh, it's sort of there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's the heart. The heart wants what it wants, and and uh, I I got uh, a lot out of going to the Unitarian Church and a lot of going on going to the Buddhist uh, temple. And um, when I told one group about the other, neither objected, um, <laughs> neither had a problem with that. Um, so I just kept going uh, all the way through seminary and even today. So uh, that's a big part of. We do have a Buddhist group that meets um, at the church, um, kind of run by one of our members. Um, it's actually one of our biggest and most uh, uh, successful programs, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, it's it's uh, that, that, that's sort of my my spiritual journey. I I don't really consider myself an atheist necessarily. I, I have an understanding of God that I'm comfortable with. Um, it granted, it may not be what most people understand God to be, but it's one that works for me, and so I. I feel like I can say I believe in God in a uh, rather uh, personally authentic way. Uh, uh, again, if I were to describe it all to you, um, you'd probably say, I don't know, God, <laughs> that's not what I believe. Um, but, uh, you know, that's Unitarian Universalism. It works for me. Got me in a good place. Yes, sir? Question here. Is there a book that you can recommend so where we can read all of this good stuff? Yeah, oh yeah, there's a bunch. Um, but I will, I will recommend some, some easy ones for you. Uh, let's see, um, Our Chosen Faith, or is it, no, excuse me, A Chosen Faith, they changed the name from R to uh, A, A Chosen Faith by John Burens and Forest Church um, uh, is, is probably a really great um, entree um, into this. Um, and uh, uh, John Burens, um, the, the, the Burens and Church wrote that book when they were co-minister at a church together, a big church in New York, and John Burens then went from that serving that congregation to be the president of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Uh, and, and Forest Church went on to become one of the foremost uh, theologians in Unitarian Universalism at the time. So it's a really good kind of introduction to 
Unitarian Universalism, and, and pretty common to find, you know, just sitting on the shelf at Barnes & Noble, um, if you catch them on a good day. They, they may actually have it in stock. Certainly in, uh, on Amazon, you can find it. How are you spelling the last name? Uh, Burens, B, mm -hmm. I'd have to write it. B-E-U-H-R-E-N-S, I want to say, and then Church, C-H-U-R-C-H. You'd think he'd be destined to become a minister. His dad was actually uh, um, a senator back in the 70s um, from Idaho. I can't remember the name. Yeah. Right. Frank Church, yeah. His dad, he's, uh, Frank Church was his father. Is, uh, this, what is the, um, uh, the uh, status of the uh, Universalist Unitarian Church uh, in terms of growth rate? Is, mm. it, is it growing? Is it stable? Is it uh, decreasing? Yeah. I mean, there are churches going in all directions these days. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, um, particularly in mainline denomination, however we understand that term, um, you know, there's been a lot of decline. And uh, uh, Unitarian Universalism tends to be kind of flat, um, kind of plateaued um, numbers-wise. It goes up a little bit, it goes down a little bit, but it's mostly been flat. Now, of course, the U.S. population keeps going up, so we, we keep losing as percentage of the U.S. population. But in terms of raw numbers, we tend to be uh, rather rather flat. Of course, we're a lot smaller than um, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, and so forth. Yes, sir. How, how many numbers are we talking about? Yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> Someone else may, may know them better than I do. I want to say uh, about five hundred thousand. Nationwide, um, with uh, maybe 2,000 congregations, so it's pretty small uh, uh, relative to uh, a lot of other a lot of other denominations. And again, it may, don't don't quote me there. Yes, sir. Outside the U.S., anything? Oh yeah, um, uh, Canada, of course. Um, <laughs> we got a lot of our Canadian brothers and sisters. Although interestingly, uh, uh, Unitarian Universalism in Canada is mostly Unitarian and not so much Universalist. I, I don't really know why, but um, uh, that, that uh, is still there. Um, uh, I mentioned, sort of in passing, when I was talking about the Unitarians, um, that there were early Unitarians in Poland and in uh, Romania, uh, Transylvania specifically. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the Unitarians in Poland kind of vanished. But uh, Unitarianism, and again, not Universalism, but just Unitarianism, uh, in Poland, in, in Transylvania, uh, continues to this day, and uh, actually um, is, is interestingly different. Um, because, of course, uh, as you, many of you may know, uh, uh, after World War II, uh, Romania becomes part of the uh, Eastern Bloc, and there's this kind of you know, big divide between East and West. And so, um, for 50 years, 50 some years, something like that, we we didn't, you know, we in the West didn't know what was going on on the other side of the Iron Curtain with our Unitarian brothers and sisters who were in Romania until that comes down. Um, and and interestingly, it's way more Christian, far more Christian than what you would experience as a, a, compared to the American. And they love bishops. They have bishops and and things that that. Uh, we would, you know, we'd be aghast at as we were talking about a moment ago. We value congregationalism and, um, you know, uh, kind of have a little bit of an anti-authoritarian streak in us. Um, and, and they have bishops and ministers and, and just started ordaining women. Um, Unitarian Universalists were um, uh, among the first to start ordaining women, for example. So that that's a, that, it's a very different kind of vibe to it. But that's probably the biggest enclave. There's there's other. Um, uh, Places I, I lived in Japan for a year and attended a, a Universalist church that was founded in the 1890s. Uh, that the Universalists went and did some evangelizing in the Philippines and, and in Japan. And uh, there's still one, still one going in in Tokyo. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, the female members of the clergy. Could you give us some percentage of the clergy in the Unitarian group that are female? Uh, and comment about the uh, training of sure. clergy. It seems there are a number of uh, Unitarian ministers that I know of have come from some other religion, but mm -hmm. uh, can you speak about the training? Sure. Um, well, you see before you a minority. <laughs> There's not many ways in which I can, as a straight white man in America, can say that I'm a minority, but when I say I'm a male Unitarian 
minister. Um, I actually am in the minority uh, in that over 50% of the Unitarian versus clergy in America are female. Um, uh, uh, and in fact, I went to school with a woman who, uh, her mom was a Unitarian minister and then she became a Unitarian minister. And it was one of the first instances in uh, history where uh, there's been a lot of men who then had sons who became ministers. There were very few women who then had daughters who became Unitarian Christmas ministers. So it's one of our first uh, well, uh, mother-daughter combos. But uh, uh, so, yeah, we, uh, beginning really in the um, 70s and into the 80s, unit, uh, women really sort of began to feel uh, the glass ceiling shatter a little bit and uh, uh, really became you know, sort of flooding into uh, our ministry. And, and like I say, now it's very, very common to have uh, female uh, clergy in our, in our uh, churches. Um, in terms of training, it's pretty typical of other denominations. Um, uh, one is required to have a, what's called a Master of Divinity degree, which is a, a three-year postgraduate degree, and that's pretty standard for most uh, denominational you know, Lutheran, Methodist, and so forth. Most most, uh, 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 most folks have that country. Yes. Could you comment on? Uh, Wait till the uh, microphone, please. Could you comment on uh, what percentage of Unitarians are there because they were born Unitarian and those yeah. that come in from other churches? Right, right, right. You, well, I don't. I, I honestly don't know the answer to that question, but I would suspect that um, many of our many Unitarian Universalists you meet were probably uh, something else first. Um, what we sometimes call come outers, um, uh, people who came out of some some other tradition and came in became Unitarian Universalist. Although, and this is nothing more than my own experience, so take it for what it's worth, it feels like that's happening less and less. It seems like I go to more and more things, uh, events, meetings, gatherings of Unitarian Universalists, and find people who grew up Unitarian Universalist at it. Um, I don't know if that's a trend or if it's just my own unique experience, but it, it just sort of, my, my gut is telling me that that's becoming a more prevalent um, thing that you see happening. But I would say probably a, a large, if not 50%, probably more, a little bit more than 50% are um, coming from another tradition to Unitarian Universalism. That's the, the side uh, question on that same point. Do you find that most children of uh, Unitarian Universalists stay Unitarian No, Universalist? no. <laughs> we, haven't, we, we haven't cracked that code any better than anybody else has. Sorry. Trust me, if we do, oh boy, we're gonna, uh, uh, A, we'll, we, we, we would grow just by keeping uh, our, our youth, and B, we could sell that that secret formula to every denomination in the world. No, I, I, I unfortunately that, you know, and I've got a theory about that, is that because it's not just us, and because it's not just the Lutherans, and it's not just the Methodists, I think it's got something to do with the way life cycles work in our culture. Um, more so than it is in uh, some sort of, because the latest studies are showing that all those big mega evangelical churches, they got the same thing happening to them. Uh, which means it isn't my theology is better than yours or yours is better than mine and therefore our children are going to stay. I think it's part of the growth development that there's something about that stage in life where you got to move away um, and then find it again or not or, or, or do some exploring. It's a very interesting kind of uh, the Jungians out there would probably have more to say about this. Uh, uh, there's something about um, spiritual exploration in, late, or in, in early adulthood uh, that uh, you know, confounds those of us who want to run institutions, but, but yet I think it's an important and maybe even a healthy stage to go through as a young person. That's my, that's my two cents on that. Um, I was just wondering what some examples of um, some things you might talk about in your sermons would be, and also about the music, um, you know, the songs you sing with it, things that we might be familiar with, or, yes. or no? <laughs> no, they, they would be things you were familiar with. Um, uh, again, there's sort of an old chestnut of a joke that I'll, I'll some of you, it's new for you. Um, why, are, why are Unitarian Universalists such bad singers? because we're too busy reading ahead in the hymnal to see if we agree with what the words are. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, 
it, yeah, uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, s songs that you would be very familiar with if you were to go to a typical Protestant um, church that maybe have the uh, uh, words changed a little bit, um, whether that could be to make things gender neutral, it could be uh, to make things, you know, go down a little bit, you know, when you're talking about the Trinity, we may need to change that a little bit. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, there's there's pretty familiar, a lot of familiarity, I would think, uh, in terms of hymn that we'll sing. Um, we, we have an organ, we play it a lot, we play Bach and all that stuff that everyone else does. Um, what was the first part of your question? I forgot. Oh, things that I preach upon. Um, so Unitarian Universalists don't really follow a lectionary, as you might guess. Uh, uh, we don't. We're not quite as tied to the to the biblical text uh, as as other denominations uh, are, um, and that's both good. And I can tell you, as the main preacher in my church, that's both good and bad. Uh, boy, it'd be nice if we had a lectionary and I would know what I was preaching on next Sunday and not have to make it up all the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, I, a lot of what we do now tends to be theme based. So we use, we take a, a, a theme for each month of the church year and sort of preach on that. So right now we're preaching on freedom. So that's kind of why you heard a little bit about freedom as a value in this talk is it's fresh in my mind. Um, and so we we will take a theme like freedom and we will say, okay, what are sermons we can do about that? What are some small group conversations we can have around those? What are uh, other programs that our youth could do? What are things that our choir could say um, and, and reflect on in our newsletter? So uh, we, we tend to go by themes as opposed to uh, lectionary tasks. Yes, sir. Uh, just to encourage you a little bit about the disappearance of some of the products of the church school. <laughs> uh, my mother converted from baptism to Unitarianism oh. when I was five years old. Uh, so I was raised in the Oh, wonderful. Uh, I fell in love with a wonderful Catholic young lady. We agreed to raise our children as Catholics. Uh, they uh, dutifully went to all the services. When my son came to that age, he married a wonderful Protestant lady, and they became Methodists. <laughs> uh, when my Grand grandson, who was raised as a Methodist, met a lovely lady. They decided that they wanted their children raised in a, a church that met their needs. They are now Unitarian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what goes around comes around. That's right, that's a great story. I, I too met a nice Catholic girl and married her, only she had a little less choice in the matter of uh, how, uh, when I was, since I was a minister at the time, so uh, we obviously raised our children uh, Unitarian Universals, but my mother-in-law uh, is a former nun, um, and my sister-in-law currently is a Catholic chaplain at a hospital, um, so they're, they're very, uh, my wife's side of them is very Catholic and very supportive of, of me and my ministry and family and so forth. So that's a great story, thank you for sharing that. I also was raised Unitarian, oh. uh, which in my community was completely unheard of. I actually had to come from Pennsylvania to Wilmington to find a church. But I'm very fascinated with the fact that you consider yourself a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's great. Oh. I, just, I just didn't think that it was um, something that people would have said. Yeah, well, um, yeah, you know that's 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 true. Uh, uh, that in in American culture, you know, we tend to uh, uh, sort of have have ourselves in little holes, you know, like pigeonholes. And if you're 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 a Lutheran and you're not a Methodist, and, and you know, it's kind of come to your story, um, and that you can't be two, um, you can't choose from two. Um, I always think of for some reason. Maybe, Hungry, I don't know. But I always think of like the way different cultures experience food. Um, so in America, you know, you order something from a restaurant, and you get your plate, um, and it isn't. And someone else orders something, and they get their plate. But there's other, but there's some cultures you go to where we order a bunch of stuff that goes in the middle, and we all take whatever we want. You know. So for example, when I lived in Japan, um, just prior to my going to seminary, I uh, traveled in Japan and studied there at a graduate school, a Buddhist graduate school, uh, and. Uh, it was very interesting that, that when one was born, uh, it was you, you took a, a newborn child to the Shinto shrine 
and there was a blessing and a purification ritual for them. Um, in, at least in sort of westernized Japan, when one gets married, it's often a uh, Christian marriage or, or mimics Western style weddings. Um, and when you die, anything to do with death is Buddhist. Um, so you will go through three different religions um, uh, in the course of whichever sort of stage you are in life. Um, and, and it was it was interesting when uh, uh, I was studying Buddhism in a Buddhist seminary. They couldn't they, they literally couldn't be more Buddhist if they tried. Um, and when New Year's Day happened, we all went to the Shinto shrine <laughs> and we all prayed for blessings of the New Year at the Shinto shrine. Professors, students, everybody did it. So there is this sense that that um, you know you can be more than one thing. And and uh, it's just sort of interesting to me that that. that, that um, uh, we, we feel so differently in the West. For me, I, I think of it as sort of like being bilingual, um, that uh, uh, there are two, two languages I can speak, two ways in which um, uh, I can uh, feel and experience the holy, be connected to other people. Um, and, and sometimes that's through Unitarian Universalist um, symbols and rituals and uh, uh, ways of explaining things, and in other ways it's through Buddhism symbols and rituals and ways of understanding things. It's kind of like liking two different kinds of music. They can both, you know, you can like jazz and classical and have both move you. Um, uh, so I guess that's sort of how I think of it. Um, uh, and I really appreciate your, your sharing that, because it's a great question. It's really a great question. One I li literally live with all the time. So thank you. Do we have one last question? Here's one of the people I paid off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you haven't mentioned, you mentioned the concept, you've talked all the way around it, and you avoided the word diversity. Oh, and yet, okay. yet pretty I, I much Unitarianism is, is all about diversity. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you've described every aspect of it without using the word, so I thought I'd use the word. Right. Yeah, I, I sort of talked a little bit about religious pluralism, and maybe maybe it's just, you know, I, I preferred that term over diversity. But yeah, it's you're right, that, that there is a a sense that um, within Unitarian Universalism we have, that, that and, and this is a little countercultural when we get to what, what's unique about Unitarian Universalism, I think this is one of, one of the key features. Difference isn't bad. Um, so often, I think, in, in American culture, no matter whatever that difference is, the gender, race, uh, religion, what have you, um, we, we uh, that, that our culture tends to look at difference sexual orientation and see it as bad. We don't like that. Someone, someone's better than someone else. And, and, the, the, and, and Unitarian Universalism really is trying to change that so that difference is good, difference is valued, difference is important, and we need to go out of our way to create more difference because we're strengthened when we have different perspectives and we're strengthened when we have different um, uh, life experiences that are present and uh, that somehow the body of the church, for example, um, is, is better. Uh, so yeah, I think you're, you're absolutely right. The diversity, in, in every way one can think of diversity, uh, is, is something to be owned and valued. And, and I think that is an important feature of Unitarian Universalism is to try to be a little countercultural to not say that difference is bad, but difference is good. And somehow, you know, there's strength to be found in that, in that diversity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, given what you and uh, my friend Chuck have just said, why would I join a uh, church that would have me as a member? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, uh, I think. Um, that's Groucho Marx. Right, right, yeah, that's Groucho Marx. I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I think. Uh, I think there's one, whatever, and, and, and I say this in the Unitarian context, but I think it's wider than that. Um, you know, we tend to look at membership in a church as being sort of like joining a country club or something like that. That that we we look at it in sort of a consumerist mentality. Um, you know, what do I get for the dues I pay, that sort of thing. Um, and I think membership in our church, any church. Uh, in participation in religion, <laughs> if I may be so bold, um, ask more of us than that. Um, it, it's, it's not just what services are get provided for a fee, but how do I live in covenant? That's really what we're talking about, right? It's how do I, 
how am I participating in that interconnection between um, myself and someone else? And what commitments and promises do I want to make? Um, and what commitments and promises do they want to make to me? Um, that maybe you'll find those in a Unitarian Universalist church in a way that would be compatible for you or, or, or jive with you in some sense. Maybe it's someplace else. But I, I think it's really at a deeper level than just, you know, uh, here's my money, you know, what, what we, and now my kids are, you know, admitted to the Sunday school. Um, it's, it's really about how am I interconnected and how are we living together in that deep cover. So I think that's, that's, that's one way. Where I don't need you, I don't already conduct my night at that point. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Uh, before the questions get possible after that tough question, <laughs> let's uh, give Reverend uh, Snyder a big hand. Thank you. And if you have other questions, I'm sure they'd be glad to retain them up. Absolutely.